All right, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to another Armchair Traveler series. I'd like to thank Russ White and Cindy Buxton for their continuing work on this series. Uh, tonight's uh, Ramsey Road School, I, I'm really looking forward to. We only have one more, I believe, left in the series. So it's been a long, long spring. I've really enjoyed all the presentations. I'm gonna enjoy this one and, and, and the next one, I'm sure. Uh, my name is Brandon Wilkes. I'm the Education Coordinator at the Haynes Public Library. If any you or anyone you know would like to put on a program, teach a class or anything else like that, please get a hold of me, 766-6420, and we'll see about what we can do uh, for facilitating that. Um, for everyone just joining us, uh, you're muted upon entry, and I'll be turning off your camera to save bandwidth, but at the very end of the program, when you, uh, it's time for the question and answer, you can unmute and turn your camera back on. With that, I will kick, I kick it over to Cindy and Russ for our bio. Uh, Cindy. Hi, guys. Thanks for, thanks for joining us tonight, and all those of you who will uh, join watching the recording um, once it comes out next week. And um, I want to remind you, those who have missed past talks, you can go on the library website and look under e-learning and online program, and then you can watch the recording of the other talks. There have been, some, there've been quite a variety of different talks, and they've all been really good. And uh, thank you to all those of you who, who put on these talks. So our last one, our, our next talk, which will be the last one of the series is Dina Selby, which will be next Thursday, April 21st at 7 p.m. on Costa Rica. And that should be wonderful. She's a great photographer, as you all know. So I'm sure she'll give a really good talk. So um, tonight we will have the pleasure of seeing the United States through the eyes of an 11 year old, which is um, different than the eyes of someone my age, um, I've become, uh, I think it's really cool to see them through a kid's eyes, especially the first time they've seen something. So I'm pretty excited about this talk. Um, during the talk, if you have questions, you can type them into the chat. Um, Lily may not answer them at that point, but then she can look at them uh, when we're done with the talk. We can wish we'll have a, uh, a question uh, time period there as well. So, um, Lily will be 11 years old on her birthday on Easter. And uh, she loves art, music, science, nature, birds, and theater. So here we go. Here's, Li here's Lily. Thank you. Ramsey Road School, homeschooling on the road through national and state parks, monuments, and botanical gardens. So, why we did road school. So the 2020 storm was our motivation to leave Haines and explore the national parks because we realized that life was too short. And so we followed our dreams and we flew to Florida to see family. And we bought an RV to go explore the national parks. So at the end, I will be talking more about this junior ranger program that they have, but you fill out these booklets and you can learn about the park, the place, the people that were there and the wildlife and the plants there and the ecosystem. So the route that we took across the country is gonna be these next three slides. So we flew to Florida to see family and, um, and, and we bought an RV and we went, up through the Southwest and finally up to Bellingham, Washington, where we left our RV in covered storage for the winter or for the summer and flew home and spent the summer in Haines. We flew back and picked up our RV Luna and drove her down to Phoenix, Arizona, where a friend let us leave her with them as we flew back to Florida again to see family for the holidays. From there, we flew back and drove up the California and Oregon coast and finally left her in Bellingham again and then finally flew home to Haines where we are now. So here are some of the hikes that we did on our journey that I really recommend and I think that everyone will enjoy if you happen to be in the area, you probably should go to those. So the Narrows in Zion National Park in Utah. So this is a really great hike and you're going through a canyon, on a, in a creek through a canyon, and the water is really cold and sometimes it can get up to your waist or up to your chest if it's in a really deep spot. And we rec I recommend getting gear from a gear rental shop in town. We use Zion Guru 
and um, we got waders and water shoes and hiking poles and um, dry suits. So that was super fun. And the day before at seven o'clock, tickets, um, they put tickets on sale for the shuttle to get to the start of the hike and they sell out within three minutes. So you have to be on the website and ready to click the buy tickets button. The next hike is Calf Creek in Utah. So this hike is a fun hike, especially for families, and it leads to this beautiful waterfall and there and it ends up creating a creek that you will walk by on the part of the hike. And it gets really hot in the afternoon, so I recommend starting the hike in the morning. And you can see along the canyon walls, they have these petroglyphs right here. And um, for school, um, we got this book about the petroglyphs and their meanings and where they're from and the history behind them. So we could understand what they were. And after that, we went to the Anasazi State Park in ruins. And um, this is a glass case of arrowheads that they had um, different ones from different native tribes in the area. And they had um, descriptions of each type, where they were from um, and how they were used and what they were made of. And that was super cool to learn about. And they had this stretch that was about a hundred meters or a hundred yards and it covered little um, pavilion thingy and under it they found about 13,000 artifacts in this one spot and they found walls of an old ruin and there's this little walkway that goes right by it and they have all these signs that tell you what every room was and they're all uncovered and that was super fun to see that and it was amazing how many they found in just one small spot. So Fairyland Loop in Bryce Canyon National Park in Utah is exceptional, especially for the colors. There's terracotta colored cliffs and bright blue skies. And um, these rock formations here are called hoodoos and they are from the cliff that slowly eroded away and left these rock formations. And I kind of think the name's a bit funny, hoodoo. Um, but here are some of the hikes in Sedona, Arizona that I recommend going to if you happen to be in the area. So Bell Rock is a great hike. You can go up onto Bell Rock or rock, walk around it. Boynton Canyon, Bay Canyon, and Courthouse Loop is one of our favorites other than the Secret Cliff Dwelling and Palaki Heritage Site. So the Secret Cliff Dwelling, we were on a hike and I'm not gonna tell you where, but we found our own cliff dwelling while exploring and this is a piece of black on white pottery shard of what looked to have a striped pattern on it and prehistoric corn which is actually really tiny but we zoomed in so you could see it and it actually to me when I first saw it it looked like it had been left out on the counter from last week it was really really well preserved and we found this bone like claw almost and what we believe to be an arrowhead that somebody had started making but never finished so what I thought is, why did they never finish it? And like, did they leave the area for a certain reason or was it just forgotten or left behind? And there were many walls to this cliff dwelling and it was right on the edge of this cliff um, with this cliff as the rooftop and we left everything we found there, which was because that's the right thing to do. And after that, we went to the Palaki Heritage Site where we learned about the different pigments that they would use to grind up. And um, there are sto different stones or something that you grind into a powder and they sometimes add water or even urine and they'd make a paint and they would paint um, designs or petroglyphs or pictographs on the walls. And so those are some of those petroglyphs and pictographs. And this is one of those junior ranger programs. And this park ranger had this little Altoid Tim with a bunch of different things that he had found at that site, which he gave me, um, including here are a few of them. This is an arrowhead that he found at that site. Um, a piece of fossilized sponge because Sedona, Arizona used to be actually underwater because you can see on some of the rock formations, there are lines showing where the water was over time. 
um, this piece of chert, it's the materials that they make arrowheads out of, um, a small piece of obsidian. This stone that they ground up, as you can see in this other slide, call, which is this yellow right here, it's called limatite. It makes a yellow pigment. And this other one called hematite, which there's a hematite on the periodic table, but it's not the same. This makes a red pigment. So um, that was a very, it was a very cool experience. And I really enjoyed doing um, that and learning about the different things that those people would use. So the geological walk of time in the Grand Canyon National Park in Arizona isn't exactly a hike. It's more of a walk and you can anyone can do it from beginner to advanced and it's around the rim of the Grand Canyon. So it goes from the north end to the south end or south to north and along the hike or walk they have these stones that, like this and they're the different layers each stone is a different layer and it tells you about them and you can touch them and look at them and it um it's basically the geological walk of time so on them it talks about each geological layer and then on the um walkway they have these little plaques these little things metal plaques in the ground that tells you the date and you're slowly going back in time or forward in time with the geologic with the different layers and you can get this little pamphlet or booklet at the um at the gift shop and they show and it tells you what the layers are so you can know where you are on the hike and it tells you all about that and what i also recommend if you happen to be in the grand canyon is going for sunrise, um, we ate breakfast on the edge of the Grand Canyon. So that was super fun. And I recommend doing that as well. And then if you stay and all day long, and then you stay until sunset, it's super cool because the colors are completely different. Like there are reds and purples, whereas the other ones are slightly different colors. So it's super cool to see the different throughout the day, the different colors changing. This next hike is called Fern Canyon in the Redwoods National Park in California. So this is a really fun hike and it was probably one of my personal favorites. And you're going through the redwood trees and you can really see why they call it Fern Canyon because there are a lot of ferns and a lot of moss. And there, um, it's a seven mile hike, but you can turn around at any time. And it is very, very cool because you feel like you're so tiny compared to the such big redwoods and you're just looking up and you feel so small and it's amazing to see that if you see like a baby redwood compared to the big ones to see how that the littlest of itty bitty sprouts trees can grow into ginormous redwoods which feel like giants compared to us humans and so that was super cool and this is just a picture that just looking up at the the trees at the sky and it's just amazing when you if you go there it's super cool it's super i feel like the redwood trees are really wise when you just look up at them and see how big they are compared to us because to us because we're so small so here are some campgrounds that i really enjoyed and um most of them have a story behind them and so i'm going to tell you about some of those so Oleano State Park in Florida is a very nice state park. They have a cool suspension bridge and lots of walking and hiking and biking trails. And in this picture, you can see I'm kind of like looking kind of confused because in Alaska, they don't have any signs like this. They don't have any alligators and they're really, and that actually kind of surprised me. It kind of puzzled me because I've never seen one of those before. And a place we went after that was Jenny Springs in Florida as well. So you can swim in the springs. There's a lot of wildlife and bird watching. And the, the springs in some spots are just really, really turquoise. Like it looks just pure turquoise and really clear in a lot of spots. So that was, it was just very interesting to see how in some spots it was clear, but like here, but then like really turquoise, but then in other spots it was more murky. And that was interesting to see that difference as well. So after our visit to the Alamo, where my great, great, great grandpa has a brick there, we stayed at South Palmetto State Park in Texas. Now they have a lot of 
hiking and biking trails. They have a historic house there and a historic mill. But if you do go biking, try not to go over the railing of a bridge like I did into a ditch filled with leaves. So um, my wheel just slightly turned. There, um, There's about an inch at the beginning of the bridge where there isn't any railing. And my wheel just slightly turned and it went over the handlebars, over the railing of the bridge where there was railing and fell into the ditch. And so that was a lesson to me to always wear a helmet, which I was doing. So that's like reinforcing my idea, keep a helmet on always. <laughs> and that was a really nice campground. Devil's Garden in Arches National Park in Utah. Now I know the na name does not sound inviting. It was probably, I thought it wouldn't be a nice campground, but it was really, really nice. They had their own um, private arch as this one, one picture on the right shows. And it's really close to arch, um, different arches you can go to, including lots of hikes and um, you can go see the sunrise. Now, my parents and I, we would drive in early in the morning into the park so we could see sunrise on a lot of them. And they drove in and we entered the park and I was still in my pajamas. I was still sleeping up in my bunk. So um, that was a really fun experience to see the sunrise in your pajamas in Arches National Park. Um, and this is the delicate arch. Probably when everyone thinks of arches, they think of the delicate arch, but it's actually really busy. And um, a lot, it's very touristy in that area, that one area of the park. Um, Sand Arch was also a nice spot in Arches National Park too. They have some hikes there and you can go there from the Devil's Garden Campground. So Kodachrome State Park in Utah is also a pretty nice campground. So they have a lot of really interesting geological formations and they have these super like I don't know what to call it, these rocks that have all these little itty bitty teeny tiny crystals that are just kind of erupting from it, which are actually these hills on the side of them. They just have them, this bunch of crystals and they have a Frisbee golf course and lots of hiking and biking trails and a junior ranger program there, as well as some of the other parks that we went to had as well. Um, Rancho Sedona in Sedona, Arizona is a pretty nice place. So I would say we usually don't stay at RV parks, but this is the one I, I thought, you know what, I'll put it on here because it's pretty nice. They have not only bathrooms and laundry in it, but they have a really nice view of Oak Creek and they have river access. Um, they have some hikes that are right off of there. Um, I don't know the name of those, but you, if you just walk up Schnebly Hill at the top, they have a bunch of trailheads and it's super cool to go from there. And um, they have um, lots of red rock, lots of hikes right from there as well. So Catalina State Park in Arizona, I would say is one of our favorite state parks because they have lots of hiking and biking trails, but they also have um, these really cool saguaro cactus. Um, and this is this crested saguaro, so it almost looks like a fan and it's all crusted out. And they also have raptor talks and bird talks at the amphitheater, which are very informative. And they talk not only about the native birds to that area, but also about like different types of flight. And that was super informative. And Jumbo Rocks in Joshua Tree National Park in California I would really say that you could see why they call it Jumbo Rocks because the rocks there are jumbo. Those are not your typical pebble. They are ginormous. So um, there's lots of places to hike and explore and crawl through um, rocks and openings. And you can really see why it is super cool. And um, these are the Joshua trees, which are actually going extinct because their main seed spreader, the ground sloth, is extinct. And I learned that from a, a um, an after school program here in Haynes called CFI with Mario Benassi. So thank you for teaching me that. That helped me with this presentation. And yeah, so a lot of these rocks actually have these kind of fault lines, how they're cut and kind of balanced. And I found that was interesting because you normally don't see that on rocks. They're just all one big lump. 
Um, but yeah, so the Elk Prairie Creek Campground in the Prairie Creek State Park in the Redwoods National Park in California. So that's kind of confusing, but um, this campground is very, very wooded. They had a lot of trees and lots of moss. Um, some of the sites ran by this creek here and there are hikes right from there, like the Fern Canyon hike, which is this one and this one. And they have, it's a very nice camp, but they have no water or electricity and no Wi-Fi or cell service. So um, make your, if you want to text or make a phone call to anybody, you should do it before you get into the camp. And at the visitor center, they have a payphone, an actual payphone, which is the first payphone I've ever seen because they don't have any of those in Haines. <laughs> so the Sunset Beach State Park in Oregon is, has an exceptional stellar sunset. I mean, you can really see why they call it Sunset Beach State Park. They have this free garden for people staying at the camp. And I would definitely recommend the garden. And there is also, we saw the first garter snake. We saw the first snake on our trip. And I think my mom screamed. <laughs> um, and so if you go there, just be aware there are snakes and there is poison oak as well. So Cape Disappointment in Washington is actually very not, it's not disappointing at all. So this is where Lewis and Clark ended their journey to on their way to the Pacific Ocean and where the first woman named Sacagawea voted. So we went also to the birthplace of Sacagawea in Salmon, Idaho, and this is part of the inside of the interpretive center there as well. And that was, it talked a lot about their journey, um, about their crew and about um, some of the things that they learned along their travels. And it also had some um, copies of their journals. So you could read through some of their journals, which was super interesting. So these are some things that I, you must see along the way if you happen to be in these places because they were really fun to go to. So Abacoy and Ghost Ranch, the home of George O'Keefe in New Mexico. So this is the home of the famous artist named George O'Keefe. She, she painted flowers, landscapes, skulls, and bones. And you can visit her home, Ghost Ranch, and you can also go for horseback rides and paint um, the landscape that she painted and look at her mountain. Well, she called it her mountain. It's Mount Pedernal. And um, you can look at this really interesting arch that they put covered in antlers and bones right in front, which was made for a Western movie called City Slickers. And there was a lot of um, movies that were made at George O'Keefe's home in Ghost Ranch. So the Gila cliff dwellings in New Mexico are just outstanding dwellings because they are so high up. So it's a, it goes up about 10,000 feet and they're built on these cliffs right here. And it's like, it's super interesting because you, the way up, if you want to get there, it, you have to go like to get up there, they had to add like a whole separate thing to get up the cliff and you could see the different holes where they would put different poles so that they could climb up on them and where they the, some of the ladders are still there today and our friend who most of you might know Jenny Humphrey drove us up because we have a big RV and it couldn't go up 10,000 feet and so on the ground right by the um by the parking lot and the trailhead they have these ground dwellings which were built built later that you can go inside and what we we found, found really interesting about this photo is it almost looked like there was a spirit kind of passing over as we were there. And that was, a really came out really interesting, that photo. Um, the virtual Van Gogh exhibit is displayed in different locations across the country. They project Van Gogh's paintings on the walls and the paintings come to life. So one of my personal favorites of the virtual Van Gogh was Van Gogh's irises. What they did is they slowly sprouted and the leaves started growing and the flowers started blooming and they had this cool drum beat music in the background. And I really enjoyed that one. And this is my family, me and my dad and my mom and my Nana. And what I found was really interesting is, well, I actually find this kind of funny that they, 
um, had these signs and they put one on this pillar that says go this way and go is usually spelled G-O, but they spelled it how Van Gogh's, um, the go part of his last name, G-O-G-H, which I kind of found funny. So go this way for the virtual Van Gogh exhibit. So following our um, exhibit or visit to the virtual Van Gogh exhibit, the Getty Center and Museum, we saw um, Van Gogh's irises painting in person, which is this picture. And after that, we saw um, Claude Monet's painting the water lilies. And at this end painting, our friends John and Sabine took us to the Getty and um, they had a section on classical Greek and Roman. And so this is a Greek or Roman painting and they have some really beautiful gardens, including these azalea, almost trees. So what they took is bundles of sticks and they tied them and they made them look like trees and then they put azaleas on top. And they can really fool you, really fool you from a distance because they do look like trees. And they also had this very intricately designed labyrinth in the center of this pool of water made with azalea bushes. And they had some really beautiful flowers too in their garden and some really interesting plants. Speaking of flowers, the Tulip Festival in Mount Vernon, Washington has a lot of different flowers other than tulips. So they have different tulip festivals all over the country, but we went to the one in Mount Vernon and there are multiple farms. The two that we went to were Rosengard and Tulip Town. And I think that Rosengard was my favorite of the two because they had a a very, they had lots of different flowers other than tulips. As you can see here, there aren't just tulips. There were also some small wildflowers too. And we painted there and it almost looks like somebody dipped a comb in paint and they just combed the whole, the whole earth with different colors. And because there are tons and tons, just rows. And if you just see a line in the distance, it's just, fields upon fields of just flowers and they were beautiful. And they, they're, the double tulips were some of my favorite because it's not only one layer, it's double and they're really big and leafy and they almost look like, like they're all big and they're pretty. So I think those are my favorite of the tulips. And um, Chihuly in the Desert exhibit at the Desert Botanical Gardens in Phoenix, Arizona, was a very cool experience and it was very artistic. So the artist Jehuli, who is best known for his glass artwork and pieces, did these. So these are um, the green icicle towers and they are at the Desert Botanical Gardens. So they have a small indoor exhibit where they have these ocean, like they almost look like shells to me, the inside of an oyster shell or clam. They have these on the indoor exhibit. And outside they have these, which almost look like um, shells and the waves of the ocean almost. And these ones, which I had a question as soon as I saw them, how did he make them so that they almost look like they're glowing? Now they probably put lights down below them, but they just look like they're glowing from within. And that is just wonderful. And it brings a sense of joy and it almost looks like candy canes when you see those lines there. So here are some of the other pieces that Chihuly did and what I really enjoyed about these is that they incorporated them within the plants and they um, added, they put them all the plants around them so it acted, it kind of made a balance. Um, art and plants kind of mixed and I thought that was super cool. So the Peace Stupa in Sedona, Arizona is a very, very peaceful place. Now we happened to go there the day that the war in Ukraine started and we went there to clear our heads. So um, you can spin these prayer wheels and you can walk around and learn and you can just be and you can be peaceful and anyone can go there of any belief. And it, I really enjoyed going there. And I actually wrote a poem about being a the peace stumpa, and I would like to share it with everyone if that's okay. Peace is letting others believe in their own leader and not making others believe or follow someone else. Peace is care, love, and kindness for ourselves, for our family, for our friends, and Mother Earth. Peace is a balance, a straight seesaw and balance with all things, all animals, all places, all plants, and all people. 
Mother Earth's balance is peace. On this day and every day, let peace be the balance of life. Let peace be the balance of hope, love, care, joy, and kindness. Let peace lead life to the light of balance for all. Okay. The next one, the next must see that I would like to share is Mesa Verde National Park in Colorado. So you can get a tour um, to tour some of the dwellings, the ones that you can go into. And the, we've got some of the last tickets which sell out in the, at the end of October. So you can get tickets to go up and the drive to the top takes about two hours because it's very long and windy to get to the top of the Mesa. And going 15 miles an hour in an RV, you don't get very far. So it takes about two hours to get up there. And once you're at the top, you can do, um, you can go toward the dwellings and walk up the ladders and explore that. But there's also this driver around the top of the Mesa where they have this audio recording that you can download where an actual, a descendant of the natives who lived here is talking about the different meanings of the different dwellings and you can stop and look out at some of them. And this stone has this spiral carved into it, which usually is, um, means center of the earth or center of the universe. So it's a, I, but it could be something else. So I don't really know what that is, but I thought that was super cool there. And you can also see the, um, how they evolved from these houses down here called pith houses to the kivas, which are almost like teepee huts with mud all over them. And they're kind of in the earth to these final dwellings. And so you can see the, um, how they evolved over time in the whole thing. So the next must see is Fossil Butte National Monument. And I really enjoyed Fossil Butte. Um, you could see here, there are lots of different fossils. They had a lot of underwater um, plants and animals they had because there used to be a lake there actually. So that's probably why they had a lot of different fish and they had some horseshoe crab, there's snakes, and they have um, a lot of different specimens that you can look at, as well as they had this really interesting sea turtle shell and this um, crocodile that took them about nine years to uncover fully and clean off really well, and then finally put in the entrance to the visitor center. So Dinosaur National Monument, following our visit there was actually, I would say, pretty amazing because you could actually touch some of the dinosaur bones that they found there. So they found this big mound, this big mountain, and it had a bunch of dinosaur bones and they were there were so many of them and they were all so big that you couldn't take them and put them in glass cases in their visitor center and museum. So what they did is they built this big structure around it and you can walk in and touch some of the ones that are closer to the bottom and you just look up and there's just bones and fossils all just fossilized in it. And that was amazing. And I, I actually thought it, the bones would feel different. Like they wouldn't, wouldn't feel real, but when you really felt them, it was just so, the texture was so realistic. And it just, I don't know, something just kind of felt weird at first, but I actually really enjoyed that. So White Sands National Monument, is a very fun and very must see. So you can rent these sleds, which are here at the visitor center and the um, ranger station, and you can get a block of wax to rub on them so that they slide on the sand, but the sleds don't work very well. So our friends, Phoebe Snow and Chloe, they brought um, their boogie board and we boogie boarded down the dunes and we surfed down the dunes and you can dress up in costumes and <laughs> So we dressed up and we did that and that was a really fun experience and I really recommend doing that because it's just fun to dress up and slide down dudes on a boogie board. <laughs> so at the beginning I talked a bit about the junior ranger programs. So at each park you can earn a patch or a badge and these are some of the ones that we went to and you might not be able to see them very well but there are a lot of different ones and each of them are from filling out the booklet. And so 
the booklets were really fun to do and they have them. You can just ask a ranger at the visitor center or a ranger station or park um, center and they can give you a junior ranger program and the um, packet. So these you can also get these patches at the visitor center and these are some of the maps and Carlsbad Caverns. So I'm going to read some of those. So Carlsbad Caverns, Saguaro National Park, Rice Canyon, Kodachrom Basin, White Sands, the Alamo, um, this one is Olympic National Park, the Grand Canyon, Capitol Reef, Zion, and there's some of other ones underneath. So thank you to all of those friends who helped us along the way. You guys really helped us plan our route and thank you for letting us stay in your driveway and do laundry and for helping us out. Thank you so much. And also, did you guys know that we did this all with, well with our cat in the RV? Our cat's name is Raja Paws. And he would walk on a leash and he would, he was an RV kitty as well as a nature kitty once he was back in Alaska. So thank you all. Um, that is my presentation. That was awesome, Lily. Thank you so much. So I made a I made a list of all the places that I haven't been to that you've recommended that that I now want to go see one of these days. Um, I had I had a lot of questions. And I want to save uh, some time for all these other homeschoolers and other kids your age to ask questions. But I have a couple quick questions. One is, um, how long did you stay in various places? I mean, did you feel like you were moving a lot, or did you like come to a place and stay for a couple weeks? Um, a few days. or to stay a few days or and, and then the other question is is could you kind of describe I'm sure there was no typical day mm -hmm. but what would be like an average day like did you do math in the morning or did you explore or you know what what were your days like um well for the first one sometimes it d would depend if there was um the park was really interesting like in Zion and Arches and Bryce we stayed for three days um, and some of the places we'd stay a night or two, um, and the longest we stayed in one place was two weeks, just because that place had a lot of hikes. We stayed in Sedona mm -hmm. for two weeks because they had a lot of different cool hikes and a lot of things to explore. And so it would depend on the place and also if there was the weather or the rest of our route, if we had something ahead. And for an average day, usually I would wake up and we would do our schoolwork in the morning. We had language arts um, worksheets and a workbook. We'd have a science workbook, um, math workbook. And then on Mondays, Tuesdays and Wednesdays, I have, well, I had an ancient civilizations class I take online, a world geography mm -hmm. class I take online, a medieval history class I take online. And then recently I finished, I just started a sketching class. So I would do those and then after we did that, we would sometimes, it would depend if we would drive or not. And then once we would, if we drove, then when we get to the park, we'd set up camp and then we'd just go explore. We'd go for a bike ride or go for a hike in that park or go to the visitor center or go on a, just explore the park. Or if we were already there, then we would just spend the rest of the day after school was done to go explore. Excellent, pretty amazing. Thank you. So uh, there are people who have asked questions in the chat and other people can can just unmute themselves and, and ask questions. Hi, hey. um, I have a question. Okay. Um, hi, um, first, Lily, this was really inspiring. Thank you. Um, also, I just want to say, um, does this is inspire you to like travel around the world? Yes, it does. It really does. I, I really want to go to some more places outside of the US and maybe explore some places that have different ecosystems and see different places with different experiences. That's really cool. Thank you. Hey, Lily. Yeah. Um, I was wondering what the f um your favorite 
animal was that you saw on the tri on your trip? Hmm, that's hard because we saw a lot of different ones. Um, well, when we went to that raptor talk in Catalina State Park, they showed um, um, a few different raptors, and then later that day at the Sonora Desert Museum, they showed a bunch of different um, birds that I really liked. They showed the Harris hawk, which they had um, it fly, and then they also had some um, great horned owl and a few ravens. And I thought those birds were really interesting when they were in flight and how they were trained. So I thought those birds were interesting. And That's probably really the manatee in Florida too. Ah, uh, yeah, I, I wanna see a manatee. Yeah, they're super cool. Like they're swimming and they're flippers. They, it's like a mix between a narwhal and an elephant almost. So they're super cool. Interesting. Thank you. Can I just say, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I don't have a question. I just wanna say, I am so impressed with you. That Thank was incredible. You. And you've inspired me to see the world. So thank you very much. You're welcome. Great. Hi, I actually have a question, Lily, if I could. Um, yeah, you got to see a lot of different biomes, a lot of different parts of the country. Um, you know, Texas, Utah, uh, Oregon, Haynes, they're all very different. Did you have one that you really enjoyed in particular? Uh, did you have a favorite? Of course, Haynes has to be your favorite, but did you have one that you just really, really enjoyed? Um, well, because every place was different and there are so many different ecosystems, I'd say all of them were my favorite, but probably I really liked some of the Utah parks and the Arizona and then the Redwoods were really nice. And I, those were some of the ones that I really enjoyed the most. Hi, Lily. I'm very impressed with your remembering everything you did. Mm -hmm. I want to know how you kept track of all the mm -hmm. things that you did on this trip. I had a journal that I would write in after every day to show, um, to write about what we had done that day. And I really think I've, I've I have a pretty good memory, so I remembered a lot of the places, but also by looking at some of those junior ranger badges and the patches and the maps every few days, I would start remembering the places and it would be really hard for me not to forget all those places because they were all so amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we have some questions in the chat. I'll go ahead and read if, uh, if you'd like. Uh, from the McMahons, Fend is wondering if you saw any elf owls or burrowing owls. No. I saw great blue herons and great horned owls. That's it. Uh, he's also curious uh, if you saw any beetles. Ooh, yes. We saw a really big black shiny one on our picnic table. I don't remember which one it was. And we saw one, I don't really remember, but I, it had some sort of weird pattern on its back. It was like a tannish color that I saw on a hike. I don't remember which hike or which beetle, <laughs> but um, that one looked super interesting. And did you see any exhibits on the giant sloth? Um, yes, we did. In Carlsbad Caverns, we saw a giant sloth. And the first time, and Karchner Caverns, and the first time we went to Karchner Caverns, um, we didn't get a tour in. And then the second time we went, um, we got a tour in. And I really, I really enjoyed looking at that sloth. They had this really big sloth exhibit, and it's just hanging there. And they found sloth, and then they also found a um, woolly mammoth down in the caves which I find was pretty interesting that they are underground. And so that was a super fun experience, except for the second tour when I almost blacked out on the way out because the heat was, there was so much heat and humidity. And so I almost blacked out. Well, I'm glad I wasn't there. I would definitely have blacked <laughs> out. Uh, Daniel. Carry me out. <laughs> 
That's what parents are good for. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Daniel Humphrey would like to know: Did you see many places you wondered what it would like to be? Uh, to what we would what it would be like to live there? Ooh, yeah, there were a few places. Um, I wondered what it would like be like to live in the desert, probably because it was so dry and there wasn't very much water. And in Haines, I'm used to there's usually a lot of water because we have glaciers and mountains with snow and we have the Chilkat River and a few other rivers. So it's, I'm used to there being water. And I was wondering what it might be like if you were there and there wasn't as much because I'm used to be, being around lots of water. Thanks. Do we have any other questions? Yeah. I have a question. Okay. Um, I'm wondering if you have any of your notes written um, that anybody could get a copy of because I, I have tendonitis in my wrist and I was trying to take notes and I couldn't do it, but I, I would be, um, I actually appreciate. have some notes, but I need to revise them because, but I can send you a copy of those if you want. That would be great. Yeah, I would appreciate having that just to yeah, inspire me. <laughs> if anyone wants to talk, you guys could come over and have some tea. And if you want to learn about a specific place, you guys could do that too. Oh, that's so nice. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I would like to say something. Can you hear me? Yep. This is Kil Miss Colleen. Hi. Hi. Um, I just want to say that I'm so, so proud of you. Thank you. Um, for uh, experiencing all you have experienced and the way you have absorbed it and, and the way you have given us this experience that we have not had. Um, but I do, I wanna say that obviously as your art teacher, mm -hmm. um, I love the fact that you went to Ghost Ranch <laughs> mm -hmm. and um, we've studied Georgia O'Keeffe Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, I've, I've loved every single second that I followed you with you and your parents. And I think it's so amazing and special. Thank you. And I, I'm very, very proud of you, Lily. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> also, Lily, you did a really good job on your presentation. Thank you. <laughs> I have a question. Hi. Hi. Um, I was wondering if um, in any of the state parks, if you saw any um, quail. Ooh. We did. We saw the capral quail. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's really cool. Yeah. Also, your presentation was really nice. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Uh -huh. All right, do we have any other questions? Uh, just a statement. <laughs> um, can you hear me? Yep. Uh -huh. Okay, good job, Lily. You did a really good job. Thank I love the, you. love the presentation. And what kind of quail was it again? The gabbrel quail. The gambles. The gra yeah, the gambles, I think. There you go. Good job. Oh, okay. <laughs> Super sweet. Um, uh, yeah, I was wondering, did you learn about any edible plants while you were there, while you were on your trip? Hmm. Or medicinal plants? Was there yeah, anything really, that you learned? Just sage. We, we learned, we collected a lot of sage in the desert hmm. and we made sage bundles, but probably the only medicinal one that we saw and no, well we saw sure. some rosemary and lavender too and cedar and cedar yeah <laughs> and, eucalyptus. and eucalyptus yes <laughs> hey by the way we got your package okay <laughs> thank you <laughs> thank you do you guys have it there <laughs> we do and, and i'll bring it tomorrow Okay. Okay. 
Can I, okay. say, good, can I just say good job, parents? Way to go, <laughs> Scott and Mandy, for making this happen. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, hi, Lily. Thank you so much. If I hadn't just arrived home, I would be rushing off to see all those beautiful places. Anyway, thanks for sharing. So fun. You're welcome. Thanks for being here, everyone. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much, Lily, and 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 to your parents as well. This has just been fantastic and I know that you've done such a good job of documenting and and with all the pictures that you'll remember this trip for many many years to come thank you everyone for coming yeah thanks yeah, thank bye. you bye yeah thank you Lily this was a great program uh, a great addition to armchair travel series bye. again thank you to Cindy and Russ for putting this on um, okay. if you know anyone who wasn't able to, to to see the whole thing we will have this up on the library website on YouTube uh, hopefully by this weekend uh, Lily you have a, a venturesome spirit I really appreciate you sharing with this I definitely got something out of it and uh, I hope everyone has a, a, a great night bye. good thank job Lily you. bye thank you bye, all. Lily. Bye.